I gotta run, I gotta run! So as I said in my picture comparison of the TCL 8 series mini LED TV versus the Sony AAG OLED TV, I'll also be doing a gaming comparison. Now, both these TVs have interesting quirks when it comes to game mode and we're gonna dive into them in this video. So stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover. And on this channel, we bring you the tech of entertainment. So we do unboxings, demos, comparisons like this, tips as well as real world reviews of the tech that entertains you, both audio and video. So if you like comparisons like this, you should definitely hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. So as you can see, both these TVs have stunning pictures, so I want to see how they compare to each other and I bet you want to see too, but as far as color reproduction goes, how much of a pop it has, both in uh, contrast enhancement high and low to see how the input lag is affected compared to the competition. So we'll see. In this video, I'll be comparing 4K SDR and HDR gaming as I normally do with the TVs I review. So I'll be comparing the performance of God of War on the PS4 Pro, that's a 4K 30 frames per second game in HDR, and also Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, that's a 4K SDR game 60 frames per second on the Xbox One X. And then there's also Borderlands 3, which is a 4K 30 frames per second game. So I have both of these TVs connected to my console through my Denon receiver, so they'll be receiving the exact same input. So all these games will test color reproduction, of course, as well as shadow and highlight detail. All right, so enough talking, let's get into it. Get over here! With local contrast on, picture on the on the mini LED it looks very good it looks very good anyone else want some So that's what they look like. So the colors are kind of different. I think on the mini LEDs, green tend to be oversaturated a little bit. And that's also true in game mode. I noticed it in the movie mode, but I noticed that it's also true for game mode. But that might just be a function of the quantum dots. Not playing today. We see a good demonstration of shadow detail. They're both basically equally bright. You no, know, the QLED is brighter, but I don't think I don't think it'll be an issue. Brightness, at least gaming on either of these TVs. Shadow detail or black crush doesn't appear to be an issue in game mode, but then again, it doesn't have that much contrast, I don't think. Like the contrast isn't overly done if that makes sense. The 
QLED actually looks more vibrant. The mini LED, it actually looks more vibrant. So that's interesting because I thought before that the OLED had a very good and punchy picture, but the mini LED actually beats it. That's interesting. Just look at the surroundings. The reds just look more red. The greens also. Look at the alarm light right here. The colors are more saturated. What's the mission again? Stick this in your pipe and smoke it. Okay, well, I guess. Guess I'm going in guns blazing. Ooh, not yet. Reload. No go. you right here come on you know you're gonna you know you want to come there we go okay hey man you need to shove that nuke right up in their filthy nazi nerve center the over commando is situated at ground level directly above the cavernous vault with all that alien shit inside you gotta haul your ass on up there baby Too long, man. I'm not playing around. All right, so ground level. Do I have to go down here? Oh, this is this would have been the stealth approach, but I did not take the stealth approach. Response time on both TVs is good. I'm not. I don't know if there's any input lag at all, so that's good, but they're both in the mid 20 seconds, 20 milliseconds, I mean. 20 second response time would be ridiculous. The mini LED actually looks more saturated, more vivid, which is a trend I have noticed in general. Those quantum dots are surely working. That's it. Oh, why can't I aim?
stop running. Interesting. A game like Borderlands really pops or really just comes alive on the mini LED compared to the compared to the OLED. I have to say. Chasing me. I gotta kill those stupid nogs first. Oh. The specular highlights are high on both screens. There's a bit more detail in the shadows on the OLED, at least in this scene. I've also seen other scenes where the TCL had more shadow detail. T 
TCL is brighter than the OLEDO for sure, but that's to be expected. All right, let's get this over with. Let's see what these guys have. Oh. Crap. Crap. Yeah, I did not see that coming. Overzealous. There was some health somewhere. Oh look! Health! Alright, I'm in the game again. Down, one down, two to go. Nobody's dropping health. Don't you dare die! after the fact.
you wee little bugger. The colors on the mini LED look well, more vibrant than it does on the OLED. That was, that was rough. Here we are on the flip side. It was an interesting demo, wasn't it? I mean, I certainly think so. Now, one of the things I really wanted to test in this demo was the input lag differences on the mini LED QLED when there was local contrast set to high. Because the early review stated that once the local contrast was set to high, then the input lag increased substantially. But during my testing, that was not the case. So that leads me to wonder if TCL implemented some kind of fix in the firmware update that I had to install when I just uh, powered on the TV. In fact, I was wondering if it was really fixed or if it was just something I was missing. So what I did is I changed the Sony to cinema mode while I was gaming so the input lag would increase substantially because the input lag in cinema mode is much higher than game mode and I saw the results. I saw where the Sony wasn't as quick to respond as the mini LED so I am suspecting that there was a fix implemented. That's my thoughts, but most of the gaming demo that you saw, actually all of the gaming demo that you saw, the local contrast was set to medium. Speaking of what we saw, the colors. Now, just like in the picture comparison, the TCL was more saturated and more vivid, but that came at the expense of some green tint that was introduced to the picture, and that was also true in game mode. So it was more vivid than the Sony OLED, which was already quite vivid. So in a colorful game like Borderlands 3, the colors just pop, but in most other cases, it would just be oversaturated. Both TVs perform well in gaming, but don't get me wrong, these are not the best gaming TVs, so if gaming is your number one priority, then these probably should not be your first choice. The LG C9 and the Samsung Q90R would be better choices for a OLED and for an LCD TV. But back to the picture, the mini LED had the brighter highlights as would be expected and Sony's tone mapping just could not keep up with the highlights generated by the TCL. That said, Sony handled the shadows better because there was still some black crush on TCL's part in HDR gaming. On SDR gaming, they were at parity because I didn't notice any black crush, but it was definitely noticeable in HDR. The review for both of these TVs are upcoming, as well as a comparison of the Mini LED with Vizio's P-Series Quantum X. Now, both of these are QLED TVs, but one is an LED backlight and one is a Mini LED, so that should be an interesting Interesting comparison also. Another important thing to mention is the ongoing sale at the merch store. Now everything there is 20% off including this t-shirt and more of course so you should definitely get something and getting something from the merch store helps to support the channel so we can do more comparisons like the one you just saw so all your support is appreciated. Don't forget to hit that like button if you liked the video, found it informative or entertaining and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more content. Until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying peace.